Hi everybody and welcome to Extending Your Network. Let's begin! Port forwarding is an essential component in connecting applications and services to the Internet. Without port forwarding, applications and services such as web servers are only available to devices within the same direct network. Take the network below as an example. Within this network, the server, with an IP address of the one that we see on the screen, runs a web server on port 80. Only the two other computers on this network will be able to access it. This is known as an intranet. If the administrator wanted the website to be accessible to the public using the internet, they would have to implement port forwarding, like in the diagram below. With uh, this design, network number 2, we will now be, uh, we will be able to access the web server running on network number 1 using the public IP address of network number 1, which is the one that we see right here. It is easy to confuse port forwarding with the behaviors uh, of a firewall, a technology we'll come on to discuss in a later task. However, at this stage, just understand that port forwarding opens specific ports. Recall how packets work. Uh, in comparison, firewalls determine if uh, traffic can travel across these ports, even if these ports are opened by port forwarding. Port forwarding is uh, configured at the router of a network. Uh, and now let's answer the question, what is the name of the device that is used to configure port forwarding? And that will be router. So router and we submit. Great. And now let's move on to the uh, next uh, task, which is firewalls 101. A firewall is a device within a network responsible for determining what traffic is allowed to enter and exit. Think of a firewall as border security for a network. An administrator can configure a firewall to permit or deny traffic from entering or exiting a network based on numerous factors such as where the traffic is coming from, has the firewall been told to accept or deny traffic from a specific network, where is the traffic going to, has the firewall been told to accept or deny traffic destined for a specific network. What port is the traffic for? Has the firewall been told to accept or deny traffic destined for port 80 only? What protocol is the traffic uh, using? Has the firewall been told to accept or deny traffic that is UDP, TCP or both? Firewalls perform packet inspection to determine the answers to these questions. Firewalls come in all shapes and sizes. From dedicated pieces of hardware, often found in large networks like businesses that can handle a magnitude of data, to residential routers like at your home or software such as Snore, uh, firewalls can be categorized into to five categories. We'll cover the two primary categories of firewalls in the table below. Okay, so first category will be stateful. Uh, this type of firewall uses the entire information from a connection. Rather than inspecting an individual packet, this firewall determines the behavior of a device based upon the entire connection. This firewall type consumes many resources in comparison to stateless firewalls as the decision making is dynamic. For example, a firewall could allow the first parts of a TCP handshake that will later fail. If a connection from a host is bad, it will block the entire device. Okay, and the next category is uh, stateless. Uh, this firewall type uses a static set of rules to determine whether or not individual packets are acceptable or not. For example, a device sending a bad packet will not necessarily mean that the entire device is then blocked. Whilst these firewalls use much fewer resources than uh, alternatives, they are much dumber. For example, these firewalls are only effective as the rules that are defined within them. If a rule is not exactly matched, it is effectively useless. However, these firewalls are great when receiving large amounts of traffic from a set of hosts, such as a distributed denial of service attack. And now let's answer the questions. What layers of the OSI model do firewalls operate at? And that will be layer 3 and layer 4. Okay, so let's type in layer uh, 3 and then layer 4 and submit. Great. Uh, what category of firewall inspects the entire connection? And that will be stateful. 
okay and what category of firewall inspects individual packets and that will be stateless great and now let's move on to the next uh, task firewall Deploy the static site attached to this task. You must correctly configure the firewall to prevent the device from overloading to receive the flag. What is the flag? Okay, so let's find out. The website and the IP address that we see right here is under attack. Quickly add some firewall rules to stop the server from crashing. The packets in red are from the attacker's machine. Okay, so let's begin. Okay, so this is the IP address of the attacker's machine, which we are going to use as the source IP. And then destination IP is of the server that we're trying to protect. So this is the IP address that we're going to use. The port will be 80 and the action will leave it at drop and we add rule. And now we are able to save the server. There you go. And this is our flag. So let's copy the flag and uh, paste it down here like this and we submit and we are correct so let's move on to the next uh, task which is vpn basics a virtual private network or vpn for short is a technology that allows devices on separate networks to communicate securely by creating a dedicated path uh, dedicated path between each other over the internet, known as a tunnel. Devices connected within this tunnel form their own private network. For example, only devices within the same network, such as within a business, can directly communicate. However, a VPN allows two offices to be connected. Let's take the diagram below where there are three networks. The devices connected on network 3 are still a part of network 1 and network 2 but also formed together to create a private network, network 3, that only devices that are connected via this VPN can communicate over. Let's cover some of the other benefits offered by a VPN in the table below. allows networks in different geographical locations to be connected. For example, a business with multiple offices will find VPNs beneficial, as it means that resources like servers or infrastructure can be accessed from another office. Offers privacy. VPN technology uses encryption to protect data. This means that it can only be understood between the devices it was being sent from and is destined for, meaning that data isn't vulnerable to sniffing. This encryption is useful in places with uh, public Wi-Fi where no encryption provided by the network. You can use a VPN to protect your traffic from being viewed by other people offers anonymity. Journalists and activists depend upon uh, VPNs to safely report on global issues in countries where freedom of speech is controlled. Usually, your traffic can be viewed by your ISP and other intermediaries and therefore tracked. The level of anonymity a VPN provides is only as much as how other devices on the network respect privacy. For example, a VPN that logs all of your data or history is essentially the same as not using a VPN in this regard. TryHackMe uses a VPN to connect you to our vulnerable machines without making them directly accessible on the internet. This means that you can securely interact with our machines. Service providers such as ISPs don't think you're attacking another machine on the internet, which could be against the terms of service. And the VPN provides security to try hack me as vulnerable machines are not accessible using the internet. VPN technology has improved over the years. Let's explore uh, some existing VPN technologies below. Okay, the first one, PPP or point-to-point -point protocol. Uh, this technology is used by PPTP, explained below, to allow for authentication and provide encryption of data. VPNs work by uh, using a private key and public certificate, similar to SSH. A private key and certificate must match for you to connect. This technology is not capable of leaving a network by itself, non-routable. Uh, PPTP. 
The point-to-point -point tunneling protocol is the technology that allows the data from PPP to travel and leave a network. PPTP is very easy to set up and is supported by most devices. It is, however, weakly encrypted in comparison to alternatives. IPsec Internet Protocol Security, or IPsec, encrypts data using the existing Internet Protocol, or IP, framework. IPsec is difficult to set up in comparison to alternatives. However, if successful, it boasts strong encryption and is also supported on many devices. What VPN technology only encrypts and provides the authentication of data? And that will be PPP. What VPN technology uses the IP framework? And that will be IPsec. Great, and now let's move on to the next task, which is LAN networking devices. What is a router? It's a router job to connect networks and pass data between them. It does this by using routing, hence the name router. Routing is the label given to the process of data traveling across networks. Routing involves creating a path between networks so that this data can be successfully delivered. Routers operate at layer 3 of the OSI model. They often feature an interactive interface, such as uh, a website or a console, that allows an administrator to configure various rules such as port forwarding or firewalling. Routing is useful when devices are connected by many paths, such as in the uh, example diagram below, where the most optimal path is taken. Routers are dedicated devices and do not perform the same functions as switches. We can see that uh, computer A's network is connected to the network of computer B by two routers in the middle. The question is, what path will be taken? Different protocols will decide what path should be taken, but factors include what path is the shortest what path is the most reliable and which path has the faster medium, for example, copper or fiber. What is a switch? A switch is a dedicated networking device responsible for providing a means of connecting to multiple devices. Switches can facilitate many devices from 3 to 63 using Ethernet cables. Switches can operate at both layer 2 and layer 3 of the OSI model. However, these are exclusive in the sense that layer 2 switches cannot operate at layer 3. Take for example a layer 2 switch in the diagram below. These switches will forward frames, remember these are no longer packets as the IP protocol has been stripped, uh, onto the connected devices using their MAC address. These switches are solely responsible for sending frames to the correct device. Now let's move on to layer 3 switches. These switches are more sophisticated than layer 2 as they can perform some of the responsibilities of a router. Namely, these switches will send frames to devices, as layer 2 does, and route packets to other devices using the IP protocol. Let's take a look at the diagram below of a layer 3 switch in action. We can see that there are two IP addresses. And uh, yes, this one and this one that we can see right here. Uh, a technology called the LAN, uh, Virtual Local Area Network, allows specific devices within a network to be virtually split up. This split uh, means they can all benefit from things such as an internet connection but are treated separately. This network separation provides security because it means that rules in place uh, determine how specific devices communicate with each other. This segregation is illustrated in the diagram below. In the context of the diagram above, the sales department and accounting department will be able to access the internet but not able to communicate with each other, although they're connected to the same switch. Okay, and now let's answer the questions. What is the verb for the action that a router does? And that will be routing. What are the two different layers of switches? Separate these by a comma, that is layer X comma layer uh, Y, okay? So that will be layer uh, two and then layer three like this. And let's see if we are right. 
Yes, we are. And now let's move on to the next uh, task, Network Simulator. Deploy the static site attached to this task and experiment with the network simulator. The simulator will break down every step a packet needs to take to get from point A to B. Try sending a TCP packet from computer 1 to computer 3 to reveal a flag. Uh, what is the flag from the network simulator? Okay, let's find out. Okay, so we have computer 1 and then computer 3. So we need to change this to computer 3. And uh, yeah, you can leave uh, this uh, empty if you want to. It doesn't matter, you know, so you can just, you know, send an empty packet. So let's send a packet, a TCP packet, by the way. We have, and this is what we have chosen here, right? So, so let's, uh, let's see. Um, let's see what our flag is in, in just a few moments. And here is our network log. So you can see everything that happens right now, right? Uh, so, so, yeah, well, so let's just wait a little bit and uh, we'll get our flag. And by the way, we can, um, yeah, we have our flag here, but I was about to read the next question, but let me just paste that in here and answer. There you go. And now how many handshake entries are there in the network log? So let's go inside the network log and start counting. So one, two, three, four, and five, okay? So we type five and we submit and we are done with this room. Okay, everybody, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos on Try Hack Me. Okay, everybody, talk to you next time.